<laughs> Greg Starr, our speaker. <laughs> Greg has been involved in horticulture since working in there it's in college. He has a degree, a bachelor's degree, as well as a master's of science in horticulture with an emphasis in botany. He's published two books and was a co-writer on uh, the Cactus of uh, Arizona, well-known lecturer, well-known author, uh, many journal articles, and he's working on a third book too. So rather than have me continue to drone on, here he is. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you, Erwin. Thanks for the nice introduction. Uh, well, today I, I want to speak on feral cactus of Baja, California. And I gave this talk to the Tucson Cactus and Succulent Society back in January. And this morning I decided I would rearrange the species order a little bit. So instead of alphabetical, we're going to go north to south. So hopefully that works out just fine. It, it, seemed, it seems to make a little bit more sense that way. I mean, they both make sense, uh, either alphabetical or uh, geographical, but we're going to go geographical. So I'm going to share my screen here. I can pull this up. Yeah, we're going to go slideshow from beginning. So I'd like to uh, discuss a little bit about the barrels of Baja, California. And uh, I use, uh, there's a book, well, here's the species that I'm going to cover. There's 11 of them. Can everybody see the, all those species? I've got some bars in the way here for my screen. I don't know what you're seeing out there. Um, but I've got them alphabetized here, um, A through V for the species names. But like I said, I've arranged the slides more or less geographically from north to south. <clears throat> so I cover 11 species, and you may notice that I uh, treat Ferrocactus rectus spinus as a species and Tortula spinus as a species and not as subspecies of uh, Emerii for rectus spinus or Acanthides for Tortula spinus. And uh, that's just my thought I don't know what the accepted taxonomy is on those if it, if they're accepted as varieties or subspecies but they're very geographically distinct disjunct from the other uh, species so I recognize them as species here so regardless of what they are they're very interesting uh, taxa so there are two main books on feral cactus one by uh, Pillbeam and you can see the price on this when I bought it many years ago was about 60 bucks. And he's got a nice little key to them, but this covers all the species of feral cactus uh, that were known at the time. And it's got a little bit of information, a few good pictures in there and, and good horticultural information and some of the background, uh, like the descriptions and stuff on that. And then the other one is this one, um, the feral cacti of Baja, California. And in it, I think they treat 13 species uh, with several subspecies. And there uh, is one in there, Ferrocactus californicus, that you'll notice was not on my list, that is somewhat dubious as a species. It's not confirmed as being recognized. And then Ferrocactus townsendianus, uh, I just have not photographed that one in habitat, so I didn't cover that. So I've got the 11 species and some of the subspecies in there. So traveling in Baja, California is very difficult. Uh, it's tough on a lot of the vehicles. And you can see here some of the vehicles that uh, we've gone through here. They get worn out very quickly. That one, oh, this one was just, uh, we beat this one up pretty badly. Another one, you know, we just really uh, are hard on these vehicles down there in that harsh climate of Baja, California. This one, we got stuck in the desert and just couldn't leave, had to leave that one there. Had a little accident with this one, got it overturned and oh, had to leave that. So it's rusted out now too. 
So anyways, like I said, <clears throat> um, instead of being alphabetical, I uh, decided to take the species more or less like from north to south. So we're going to start in the northwest corner of Baja, California. And you'll notice the distributions for these do not go beyond the border of Baja, California, since this is a talk solely on the pharaohs of Baja, California. I decided not to take them up into the U.S. or across the border or across the, the Gulf into Sonora. And in the uh, pharaoh cacti of Baja, California, they do cover pharaoh cactus tiburonensis. But Isla Tiburon is actually a part of Sonora and not a part of Baja California. So that one's not covered as well. So here I've got distribution maps for uh, each of the species. And they're just kind of roughly drawn outlines here. But Ferrocactus viridescens is our first one. And it's up in the northwestern corner of Baja California. And it's an attractive little plant. It can be somewhat confused with um, acanthides. It looks very similar to that, but uh, the plants up in, in the States are a little bit smaller uh, than these in, in Baja. But you find these up in the, along the coast and up into the foothills of uh, the Sierra Madre, uh, the, not the Sierra Madre, Sierra Juarez, sorry, Sierra Madres. I've spent a lot of time in, on the, uh, mainland where there's the Sierra Madre Occidental, Sierra Madre Oriental, and the Sierra Madre del Sur. So those names are always kind of at the top of my brain there. But the Sierra Juarez, you find these on the western slopes and down toward the coast there. <clears throat> they make spectacular plants, uh, beautiful flowers on them. And like I said, they, they do look, uh, at least these that we found up in the mountains, look very reminiscent of Ferrocactus acanthides. <clears throat> Close up of the flowers there. And you didn't think you would get through uh, Ferrocactus of Baja, California without seeing an agave, did you? This is uh, Ferrocactus shaw. Yeah, I was traveling with Bob Webb up in the mountains one year and we both saw this off in the distance and uh, we were uh, scrambling over each other to be the first one out of the truck to get to this plant and take photos of it. But it is quite an unusual color on this one. Okay, the next one, Ferrocactus acanthides is up in Northern Baja, California, again, up in the Sierra Juarez and down uh, across the uh, the pass there, San Matias Pass, and into the Sierra San Pedro Martir. Uh, so again, it stops at the border, but the species does go up into California and all throughout a lot of Arizona too. So that includes a couple of other subspecies uh, over in Arizona. But the acanthides, now there was has been some controversy about the name, whether it's Acanthides or Ferrocactus cylindraceus. And it was finally confirmed or decided by the ICN <clears throat> that um, Acanthides is the proper name. It does have priority and the name is uh, used and applied to the plants that we know either as cylindraceus or more correctly now as acanthides. So they had the final word on that. So we resort back to that name. Regardless of the name, it's a very beautiful plant. Got great spination. So it grows up in the, uh, the granite, rocky outcrops and granite soils in the mountains there. So young plants have really attractive spines. I love the, the long spines on these things. And then as they age, the spines get a little bit um, a little bit thinner, the, cent the radial spines are a little bit thinner. Central spines are still very stout, uh, but very attractive plants. And they can be anywhere from yellow spine, as we see here on the left, or the red spine forms as well, and growing side by side. And sometimes the, they'll grow, they'll change, uh, they'll morph a little bit, they'll have both yellow and red, and then if so, they might morph from that to the one color or the other. <clears throat> but the plants will also grow in sandy soil down on the flats. And as they get bigger, they seem to get even more attractive, if that can be the case. 
a lot of times you'll find them tucked into these granite uh, rocks where there's just a sliver of soil for a seed to fall into, get some rain going, get the roots going, and then the, the plants actually do fairly well in these types of situations. <clears throat> and I've seen them mostly uh, blooming in the uh, late spring, I would say. So April on into early May, they have these beautiful yellow flowers and they do the, the ring of flowers at the top of the plant, uh, really attractive spines. And here you can see both colors of, of spines there, a lot of yellow and a lot of red mixed in. <clears throat> They do get to be fairly good sized plants. I think Brian Kemple and I saw one that was well over six feet tall. Uh, I remember he was reaching up to the top to try and groom the plant for good photos. And, uh, he had to stand on his tippy toes to get to the very top. And here are some of the bigger ones that we see up near San Matias Pass. So they're spectacular plants. I love the way the, the spines are, they, glow with the setting sun. In the background, you can see the Echinocereus, there's um, Agabi Pringlei there, and the Fuki area. So typical desert, Sonoran desert vegetation there. There's one that's a little bit more red spined and the, the nice yellow flowers showing up on the, that plant. And one that's a little more yellow spine, but still the same yellow flowers on that. And even more yellow spined on this one. So quite variable with the spine color from almost like this one, almost a pure blonde yellow to real red spines as well and everything in between. And then here I was having a contest with this one to see who who was the shaggiest of the two, and I'm not sure who wins that contest, but uh, it got to be pretty close there. Okay, the next one uh, going south, uh, we kind of skip over. This was doing it. It's a little tough to do north to south because there's so much overlap between them. But um, I stuck with Chrysacanthus as being the next even though gracilis is, is on the same uh, latitude as well. But uh, we'll get to gracilis in just a minute. But ferrocactus chrysacanthus. Now, the only place I've seen true chrysacanthus is on Isla Cedros. And Cedros is one of those islands that you have to take a, an airplane to. And I've been there a couple of times. One trip was with uh, Peter Breslin and Michelle Cloud Hughes. I think they're both joining us today so we'll reminisce about this trip here so you can get onto the airplane at uh you can see my cursor here up at guerrero negro and it's a short flight about 45 minutes or so across the water to the island and the island's actually not on this map but it's where the red circle is and apparently it does grow up on isla natividad and uh, it's the third island out there there's a, another small island up in that, that area, but I've not been to either of those islands to see the plants. But uh, on Isla Cedros, they're very attractive plants. So here's the plane that we took over to get from Guerrero Negro to uh, Isla Cedros. So you fly into the town of Cedros, and here you can see the, the island of Cedros, and you fly into the town, and the uh, runway starts right at the edge of a, a cliff and I had a window seat and I was looking out the window and I was really glad that the pilot had some experience because the, the runway started exactly at the edge of the cliff and uh, I was hoping he didn't set it down a little bit too early but he was spot on with the, the landing. Once you're there you can go around uh, near the town of Cedros and you can see the barrels there, and there are a lot of red spine ones near the, the town itself. Uh, but if you go up to the north end of the, the island, uh, you have to hire a boat to go from Cedros to Punta Norte. They let you out, and you can do some camping up there. Um, I'm not sure if you can still do that, but last 
when we were there, I think it was 2015, we were up there and we were still able to do that. But uh, they seem to have gotten a little more particular about uh, taking people up to there with some of the plant poaching that's been going on. So that's always a shame when things like that happen and kind of ruins it for the tourist trade for other people to go get to see these things. But we landed uh, at Punta Norte and set up camp right near the the uh, island edge near the waters. We could hear the seals out there barking all, all day and all night long and set out for a hike to go up to the top of the, the mountain there. And on the way, we saw beautiful specimens of Barocactus chrysocanthus. Some more here. And in the background, you can see Agave sebastiana. That's the agave that grows here. <clears throat> Now, I'd, I'm not sure if these are just um, a grouping of individuals or if they'd actually clustered. I've never seen Barocactus chrysocanthus cluster, so my guess is that this is <clears throat> a cluster of five individual species. And you can see slight differences in the, the spine color here. So I believe these are all individual plants and not connected. You get up towards the top and there's Agave Sebastiana up there and you can look out. This is looking out over the west side or actually, I'm sorry, down the east side back toward the gulf there. So we're looking down where we had started from down in that deep canyon. And if you continue on, you'll end up at the, the playa basically where we were camped out. <clears throat> Now this is looking out the other direction toward the Pacific Ocean itself. So looking out toward the west here. So more agave sebastiana, and you can see a couple of barocactus chrysocanthus down here in the right-hand side of the, the screen. Now the ones that I've seen on Isla Cedros have all been yellow flowered. There are pictures of red flowered ones that they say in the barocactus of Baja California that occur on the western side of Isla Cedros. Now, none of these were in bloom when I was up there, so I don't know if that holds true or not. We were there uh, early January, so the end of December, early January is when we were there. I think you'd have to be there. Uh, Brian Kemble and I saw them blooming in April, so I think I'd want to be there in April or May to catch them in bloom. <clears throat> so agave sebastiana is one of my favorite plants unfortunately i can't grow it outdoors here it's a little bit frost sensitive for me in tucson <clears throat> while up there you see you can find dudley apachyphytum um, that's one of the ones that was getting poached very heavily so i think the locals were getting a little upset about that and limiting uh, access to the island itself, to the northern part. So this is down around the town of Cedros itself, and you got these big, giant Pachycormus discolors. And like I said, a lot of this, the feral cactus there had the red spines. So it's uh, kind of interesting that the, the type locality has both the yellow and red spine ones. And the, the species name, refers to the yellow spine. So I don't know what uh, they would have done if uh, they had found the red spine ones first to name the species. So yeah, this is the red spine form of the yellow spine barrel, as I like to say. <clears throat> Even with that uh, non-yellow spine color, they're very attractive plants. That red's still a, a very beautiful red color on them. But the yellow is is uh, what sells the plant uh, to me. It's a, a really neat color on there. And th there are some that the spine color can be kind of a dirty yellow or a really brilliant yellow, golden yellow color. It's really nice to see all the variation in the spine colors. Here's one of the red spine ones. And again, they... Uh, 
with the setting sun on them, the spines will glow. So whether yellow or red, backlit spines are very colorful. And a shot of the, the flowers that uh, Brian and I found in April. I think it was about mid-April of 2010 we were there. <clears throat> okay, feral cactus 40i. Uh, it's a little bit farther north. There's two subspecies. Uh, there's one up a little bit north here in red, and then the, the southern one. I have pictures of both of them. I think, one's, uh, I think the northern one is what, subspecies borealis, and the southern one is uh, 40i, 40i. <clears throat> Maybe I've got that backwards. Borealis, is that the southern one? Peter, if you're in there, hop on there. But anyways, this is uh, subspecies Borealis. And it grows in the sandy flats. We've seen that. <clears throat> Here's more Borealis. You can see some flower buds just starting on this. I think this is, yeah, this is the northern one. So it occurs up just outside of the Sierra San Pedro Martir, uh, down close to the coast there. And then with it starting to flower, it's got those beautiful pinkish purple flowers on it. So they're smallish plants. They only get, oh, maybe about 10 inches or so tall, maybe a little bit bigger than that, yeah, about 10 inches or so in diameter. Those gray spines, they blend in very well with the surrounding desert makes it sometimes makes it hard to see the plants. Uh, but when they're in bloom, you can spot those flowers from quite a distance. They do uh, like to stay below shrub level there. So they are a little bit harder to spot from the roadside. Got to get out and start walking around to see a lot of these things. <clears throat> Okay, then feral cactus 40i, subspecies 40i. Yes, this is the one that's down around uh, Via Jesus Santa Maria. So that's down near Guerrero Negro, where you take off to from to go to Isla Cedros. And these are sand-loving plants as well. But you can see a little bit greener down here. This is a little bit different time of year uh, after the rain. So some of the vegetation was growing and... Uh, covering the ground out there. But interesting plants, they all seem to lean off to one side, kind of facing, leaning to the south there. And then in the background, you can see uh, Yucca Valida growing very tall back there, but these low growing ferro cactus, again, kind of hard to spot from the car because they're so low and blend in very well with the, the surrounding vegetation. They have similar flowers, that really gray spine color, and then the uh, pinkish purple flowers. And they bloom, uh, again, I've seen these mostly in the springtime. So I think this was an April shot when I saw these blooming. <clears throat> I love the long spines on this. They blend right in with the surrounding sand, but that gray color, very long, hook spines on them. So small plants and long spines make very for a very attractive plant. They're great in containers as well. They don't get too big, so they're perfect plants for growing in containers. You can see the uh, dearth of vegetation around here. So when you're driving along, you spot these little clumps out there and uh, have to get out and Look around and make sure they aren't little shrubs out there, but um, you see that they are feral cactus. Okay, the next one, and again, I call it a uh, species separate from emery eye, but Tortula spinus. I'm sorry, separate from uh, acanthonies, but uh, yeah, it's the distributions quite disjunct from acanthonies. So I just like to keep it as a species. It seems to be very distinct in terms of its spination. The flowers are very similar, but the spination is quite different. 
<clears throat> you can see these long reddish twisted spines on the, the plants. They, they'll grow out in the flats and uh, occasionally up on the hills around there. So they grow uh, down in a fairly localized area down around Laguna Chapala. And I understand that the highway from San Felipe is now completed. It's a super highway all the way through to Highway 1, which intersects at uh, Laguna Chapala. I'm not sure. I haven't been there since the completion. So I'm not sure if you get to see these plants still or not, but uh, they do occur up on the hill just north of Laguna Chapala. So you can still get to those off of Highway 1 and get to them and see these things there. <clears throat> but they're really cool plants. They've got these long spines. From a distance, they can be confused with gracilis. Uh, but once you get up close and start seeing them, they're easily separated from gracilis. And once they flower, they're definitely separated from gracilis. So these have the yellow flowers, whereas Barocactus gracilis has red flowers on them. And uh, Brian and I saw both of these growing on the hill near Laguna Chapala. And it's like, uh, once you start to see the tortulus venus and, and recognize what it looks like, then you can pick them out even from a distance. So yeah, it's just a matter of recognizing what you're seeing out there. And it doesn't, doesn't hurt to have them in flower to really tell them apart. few shots of the flowers here and then you can see the spines they do grow up and kind of curve and twist uh, giving it that name of tortula spinus <clears throat> okay ferrocactus gracilis so the red outline is gracilis gracilis the blue outline is known for sure gracilis coloratus and then the yellow uh, solid is where Gracilis gatesii occurs. And I've seen gatesii both uh, on the peninsula and then on the island, one of the islands uh, just outside of Bahia de los Angeles on the way to and from Isla Angel de la Guarda. So we'll cover, we'll look at each one of these uh, in order here. <clears throat> So Gracilis coloratus was the central spine is quite a bit wider. Gatesii, I didn't finish this out. It's really difficult. The, the spines seem to be a little bit grayer. The plants are a little bit smaller. Uh, but yeah, they're, the distribution's uh, farther to the east for Gatesii. Coloratus occurs within the more widespread Gracilis gracilis. So here we've got Gracilis uh, <clears throat> marching up and down the hillside here. This is growing with the, you can see the, the cereals in the background here. There's some back there in the Pachycereus, Opuntias, and I, I'm sorry, Michelle, I don't know which Opuntia this is. So I'm sure you know it. And Agave uh, Cerulata clumps out there. I thought this was really cool. You can see the red dots all throughout the hillside. And these are not, uh, these particular ones were not huge plants. So if you get to some of the gracilis, they can get to six or seven feet tall and uh, still fairly slender stems. But this young one here had the really long spines on it. <clears throat> I was taken by that. It was just very attractive with those spines. The plant will grow into it eventually. The typical gracilis has these really red spines on them and they do have red flowers. We'll see some flowers in a minute, but this is on the hill near Laguna Chapala, which is where that Highway 5 comes in to meet Highway 1. More of the beautiful red spines on this. And then we start to get some of the taller ones. So this one, this particular plant, was easily six feet tall <clears throat> and still very slender. 
And there's the, the red flowers and the red spines. So they're very distinctive once you start to see those. Occasionally you come across the crested one. And then Gracilis colorata. So uh, this one has the really wide central spine. You can see that on this very young plant here. So this was on the, the road to Santa Rosalita, which I believe is the type locality for that subspecies. It's got the same red flowers on it, but again, you can see the really wide central spines on that. And then Gracilis gatesii, this is on the island uh, on the way we spotted this on, on the way back from Isla Angel de la Guarda. We got the land on one of the islands uh, where the, the type locality for Gracilis gatesii is. You can see the, the grayer spines on this one. So that seems to be the, the main difference, uh, but the same red flowers occur on these plants. And again, another crested one we found on the island. The very rocky island out there, just not much else in the way of plant habit out there. <clears throat> okay, the next plant we've got to cover is Ferrocactus Johnstoniana. So as far as I know, it only occurs on the island Isla Angel de la Guarda. And I was given a locality many years ago and uh, Tim Gregory and I went out there one year and I had to run back to the hills to find these plants and they grow up on these hills, like the rocky hills back there. And, uh, I got a radio call from Tim. He said the boat operators were a little nervous about the, the weather. Could I hurry on back? So I told him yeah, I'd snap a few pictures here and then I'd race back and we got back and the weather was a little bit rough, but not as choppy as the year that I went with Peter and Michelle. Boy, we had quite the uh, adventure on that trip and came back pretty soaked from that one. But these are really uh, interesting plants. They grow up in the these hills, the very steep rock, rocky areas, but they're very densely spine plants. Very beautiful things. Again, I love the yellow spines on these. <clears throat> so they're, uh, they don't get very tall. Uh, the biggest one, I think this was the largest one that I've seen, was uh, a little over two feet tall, two and a half feet maybe, uh, for the maximum size. So not huge plants, but still very attractive things. And you can see the surrounding vegetation or lack of vegetation on the hills out there. So very sparse uh, on the east side of the island there. <clears throat> so there's me with the, the plant there, typical size plant. So it's a little bit over knee high, so about thigh high on me for that one. <clears throat> so the second trip I did out there, we came back and uh, I came back to Tucson and I was showing pictures to my friend Rob Romero and he said, oh yeah, some friends of his from Europe, they sent him a picture and they had pictures of it growing within probably a hundred yards of the uh, the water there. So right on the beach. So I'm going to have to go back and try and get a locality for where those plants grow closer to the water. It's not quite as, as strenuous of a hike all the way back there. Uh, so the next one in order from north to south is Ferrocactus peninsulae, and it has a very widespread distribution from close to Bahia de los Angeles all the way down to the La Paz area. And peninsula is a fairly distinctive plant. <clears throat> so it has these red flowers with uh, the tepals are a little bit clearer. Uh, almost translucent towards the tip uh, and they're very big and they have this very uh, pronounced red central stripe. It's got very long spines and they're really hooked, not just curves, but a good hook to them. 
These plants can get fairly tall, and as they get taller, they do seem to twist a little bit. Now, mostly peninsula occurs down low, and I've seen these down the low reaches of the Sierra San Francisco. And as you go up in elevation there, we'll see this one. Uh, I think that one comes up next, but Ferrocactus rectus venus. Uh, they do seem to intermingle partway up the mountain. And uh, as you get farther up, higher and higher, uh, you come upon pure Ferrocactus rectus venus. But you do run through a zone where the, the two grow together, and I believe there's going to be some intermingling of genes going on at that point. <clears throat> like I said, the flowers are fairly distinctive. Uh, they have this, they're either this nice orangey color or a little bit more red, and they have that real pale outer edge to the tepal and that real dark central stripe in there. <clears throat> So this is over in the Vizcaino Peninsula, <clears throat> and I've seen two different forms, so to speak, over there. So Ferrocactus Peninsulae Vizcaina, Vizcainensis has been applied to these plants. Uh, but like I say here, there are some plants that seem to be intermediate between Peninsulae and Gracilis. Uh, they have either have the spines of Peninsulae and flowers of Gracilis, or vice versa, the spines of Gracilis and flowers of Peninsulae. So I think I've got a couple of shots here for us to look at. <clears throat> so this one, the flowers seem to be a little bit closer to the color of Coloradus, although they still have that light colored edge to them. Uh, so the next one in line is Ferrocactus rectispinus. And I maintain this as a species separate from Ferrocactus emerii. Uh, I know some people call me a splitter. I think I'm more of a pragmatist. Uh, you know, the distribution is very different and there's no gene flow between the two. But uh, anyways, I just leave it as a species. So I don't have to write uh, too many names when I'm writing out labels for these plants. It's just easier to write out Ferrocactus rectus venus than Ferrocactus emerii subspecies rectus venus. <clears throat> so like I said, you'd start off down low on the Sierra San Francisco and you climb up into the mountains and you go through Peninsulae and you go through the transition zone where Peninsulae meets rectus venus. And then as you get higher up, you come upon just a pure rectus venus with the long central spines that are straight with no curve or no hook to them. You can see some of the, the longer spines on these. Frequently, you'll see younger plants with a slight curve to the central spine. And then as the plants age, they grow out of that and the central spine becomes a lot more, a lot straighter and longer. <clears throat> this is one that I definitely call rectus venus. They do make pretty good sized plants. I think this one was over six feet tall. Brian and I found one growing in a little nook of some rock up there on the uh, Sierra San Francisco, and it was easily six to seven feet tall, much like this one is. <clears throat> You can see the long spines on these They're very spectacular plants. Even as young ones, those spines are, are super long sometimes. Frequently they have a good color. So Brian and I camped up there and as the sun set, uh, we got to see some backlit spines. The color was really flashing brilliantly as the sun sets. And in the morning, you see similar plants with the spine color is not so brilliant red later in the day. And up at the very top, uh, 
I'm a big fan of Nolina palmeri, the subspecies Brandegii, the huge trunk forming Nolina. Okay, the next one in line here is Ferrocactus Santa Maria. Um, and as far as I know, it only grows right down in this uh, very far southwestern reaches near Puerto San Carlos, possibly on the island of uh, Margarita, uh, or that might be an undescribed species down there. <clears throat> This is Ferrocactus Santa Maria. They're fairly small plants. They can get up to maybe a foot, foot and a half tall. They have these beautiful yellow flowers. Interesting uh, spination and the way that the ribs are very distinct. They do curve somewhat uh, or spiral a little bit as the plant gets a little bit taller. But they grow out in these sandy flats down close to the coast down there in uh, southwestern Baja, California. There weren't a lot of plants. Uh, we had to kind of spot them. There were few and far between on these low sandy hills is where they were most prominent down near that, down near the town of San Carlos. <clears throat> And just a close-up of the flowers that we saw down there. Okay, Ferrocactus degetii. This grows on uh, a few islands over there in the Gulf of California. So I've seen it on two, the Isla uh, Catalina or Catalan and uh, Isla Saralvo down near. Let's see if I can... I don't know if that's showing up on your screen or not, but so I've got the, the three localities <clears throat> and I've seen it on two, uh, this one here in the middle and then down here on Isla Saralvo. These are some very spectacular plants. They're very clean looking plants with the uh, few spines, quite a bit of, uh, quite a few ribs on them, but a beautiful spine color and they have a, a very attractive flowers once you see them in bloom. So I've been there twice. I've seen these in the fall, so October, and I've seen with fruits and with flowers on them. So even as young plants, they're, they're very beautiful plants. So <clears throat> as they age, they get a little bit more unique looking. They're fairly fat plants and they get really tall eventually. We can see a whole family of them. So we've got mom, dad, and, and the youngster here. So the biggest one was about six feet tall. And then we had this next one was about five feet tall. She's down the slope a little ways and then the, the younger one there. <clears throat> a nice cluster of small or medium sized to larger ones. And looking out over the Gulf, you can see the variation in size on these things. They're very spectacular plants. So they have these, whoops. They have red flowers on them. Uh, go back to the previous slide here. So the red flowers, uh, so these were blooming in uh, October. Actually, we were there, yeah, we were there in October, November. Uh, so they're a fall bloomer, uh, but lots of Pachycereus on the island as well. This is the island of uh, Catalan. Yeah. They're very large plants down there. The Pachycereus get very big. And I was standing out taking pictures of Ferrocactus across the way. I think I was over on this hill in the background there. And I heard this really loud crack and I looked, turned around and looked over just in time to see this big Pachycereus uh, collapse or fall down the hillside here. So you can see it had just broken off uh, right near the ground there. And 
this huge thing had fallen. So fortunately, nobody was over there underneath the plant. So uh, after I heard that, I had to walk over and inspect the the plant to make see what had happened. But who who knows what happened to this one? But it maybe it just got too heavy. But uh, it did. It was a resounding crack that we heard, and very interesting to watch it fall. <clears throat> So the young plants are very spectacular. This is out looking out over the uh, gulf there. Uh, very beautiful plants growing in the rocks. And you can see how big they are. So I'm six feet tall and that plant's gotta be easily eight feet tall at that point. This is on Isla Seralvo. And that's it for the feral cactus of Baja, California. So thank you very much. And I shall stop the screen share. Thank you, Greg. That was wonderful.